I'm a hard working soul and I always do my part. I'm a hard working soul and I finish what I start. Don't tell me what you know because what you know ain't true. I'm a hard working soul, soon I pass the work to you. I'm a hard working soul, light is fading fast. I'm a Welcome to Nashville, where 85 hopeful people move every day, eager to start a new life in one of America's most storied cities. Whether they were drawn here by dreams of stardom or the city's emerging cultural scene and economic prosperity, it's no longer the clamoring drumbeat that creates the Music City's signature boom. It's the steady pounding of hammer against nail across Nashville's innumerable construction sites. In fact, construction in Nashville is surging at higher levels today than at any other time post-recession. Nowhere is the 21st century facelift more apparent or impressive than Vanderbilt University, where some 260 proud workers are leaving an indelible, iron-fisted mark on this iconic American city by constructing Vandy's new state-of-the-art engineering and science building. This is their story. Two hundred and sixty thousand square feet, ten-story building, two stories down, twenty-nine thousand foot deck plates, fifteen foot four-inch uh, elevation between decks. It houses a clean room and an engineering and science school. You know, you've got two hundred eighty-five individuals on the job, and everybody's got different personalities and different motivators. And my job is to interact with those people to try to A, make sure that they know that people care about them and that we want them to be successful. If somebody doesn't lead, if somebody doesn't push, then a construction project becomes very chaotic. If you try to be everybody's friend, it doesn't work. Somebody's got to be able to make the hard decisions to say, this is where we've got to go. That's my job. Direct labor, we run about 265 to 270 people per day. And in addition to that, there's just a myriad of support people, you know, like concrete companies and delivery trucks and, you know, it's just, it's a choreography out there. I mean, you guys saw it out there. I'm running around all day long, do this, go here, do that. And what we do really is we try to stay two, three months in front of today and then help people just be successful from today through next week. So if you don't have a plan, then you're in trouble, but you can't be married to the plan because life changes. So you go in with the plan and if something changes, then you just kind of roll with it and you make an informed decision and you keep on getting up. I've been employed by Kelly Construction for 24 years. I've been a mason for 38. It's the family business. My my dad and my grand grandfather were all in the masonry business. Well, my grandfather worked for the old Nashville Stone City Company uh, and built quite a few buildings around Nashville. Um, my dad married my mother out of the military and in order for him to be able to put food in his daughter's mouth, my grandfather taught my dad the business. And 
I've just kind of followed suit, and I've got my name on several buildings around Nashville. My father does it, and I like it. I love to weld. It's a great trade to get into. It's a great place to be and a great way to make a living. Our whole local is like a family. We all stick together. I started off as a laborer with Clark. Um, my father had actually worked for Clark as a superintendent, and he brought me up through the ranks working. I was, like I said, I was a grunt for about a year, and then I became a, a foreman, then a carpenter foreman, and then it kind of lead the role to a general foreman, an assistant super, and then I had the option of being superintendent or going to safety. And uh, he gave me an opportunity to do safety, and I went with it, ran with it. I mean, we all poke and, and all that at each other. We don't, you know, but we don't ever, we don't ever take it to heart because we know we we all got each other's backs. There's guys that I've worked with in the past that I could call today and pick up a conversation with, or. I could probably go grab a beer with quite a few of them. Passion. Passion, passion, passion. You've got to be passionate. You've got to want to do good. You've got to want to succeed. You've got to want to be able to sit back and let other people get recognized for that success. So, you know, my personal mantra is servant leadership, meaning I don't want, it's not about me. It's all about those guys and gals out there. But I have a passion, like a burning desire to, to, to be successful for the company and to see a tangible result. In, in my humble opinion, you can't run a construction project from a desk, right? You have to be out there and people need to both see you and you need to see them. One, your credibility is, I think, suspect if you're not out there with people in the morning when it's cold, when it's raining, when it's hot, and you're actually willing to engage and help them be successful. Three things, moral compass, walking around sense, and a hunger to do better by themselves and others. If they have those three things, then we can teach the other pieces. It's construction, it's not rocket science, but somebody's got to have those personal traits where I personally think that if somebody's got a good moral compass and they're making decisions, it's, it's not what a man does when, people are, when he knows people are watching. It's what a man does when he thinks nobody's watching. There's a lot more to laying brick and stuff than meets the eye. People think, well, it's really simple, it's really not. Uh, mainly technique and good hand-eye coordination and a good attitude. I'll tell you the biggest thing that I think it takes to be a good pipe fitter is mathematical skills. There's tons of math involved into it. You know, a lot of people, all these college people running around here, they think, oh, they're just old dumb construction workers. We do trigonometry every day. Well, you try to hold uh, honest and frank discussions and always keep a little touch of humor involved if you can. Uh, this is uh, other than the safety aspects involved, this is not life and death, it's a job. Uh, not take yourself too seriously because there's not anyone out here that's doing anything that someone else can't do. Listen all the time. You gotta make, you gotta practice your things and always keep a good memory on them, keep, keep a good set of tools on you, you'll be okay. You gotta like what you do. I like what I do. I mean, I got, a, I got an education and I came back to doing this. So, you know. I like what I do. I've been doing it almost four years. So, you know. A good day, uh, which is every day, is nobody gets hurt. That's a good day. I'm pretty quick to sneak up on them for as big as I am and catch them doing the wrong thing. And what we do is we stop the activity, correct it, and then get them on the right path for a safe and better day. The guys on the job view me as a very responsible, professional person, but they also know the inner me is like a little kid. You know, we're here building basically a Lego set, putting it together, having fun, but at the same point they know that I'm looking out for their safety and well-being. And they know when I come around, if I say, hey, you need to correct this, that it's time for them to correct the situation and do the right, do the right thing. 
no matter what you do, no matter how small something you're doing, safety is always first. Because if you don't put safety first, and you go in there and jump in and start doing something, you can get hurt with quickness. I mean, it only takes a second to get hurt. It is dangerous work. I fell three times, but you know, 128, 18, and six, the only one that hurt me was a six foot. But back when I came up, you didn't have, you didn't have these things on. They just started this about 20 years ago, you know? So, I don't know. It's a better, better environment for everybody on the project. Safety has gotten more stringent, and it's a good thing. As long as they're doing the right thing, I'm, I'm somewhat smiling. I base all my interaction on respect, period. Nobody knows everything. Uh, I learn something every day. There's always more than one way to do something, and just because it's not necessarily the way you've done it for ever how long does not necessarily mean that it's not okay. You have to be flexible. Uh, part of that getting along with people's stuff. I'm pretty big on wanting to get along. Uh, don't care how lot for arguing. It's, it's counterproductive. To answer your question, I think you have to walk the walk instead of just sit at your desk and talk it. If, if you make yourself humble and you care about other people, they'll break walls down for you and you don't have to even ask them to do it. I love building buildings. I mean, it's a wonderful thing. You start something from the ground to where it's dirt, and next thing you know, you're 10 stories up or you're a million square foot wide in an exhibit hall. And usually what I'll do is I'll bring my girls to see the beginning of it, maybe the middle, and then once it's a complete project, I'll bring my girls back around to see the finished project and we'll actually walk through it completed. So it's, it's a big deal for me and my family, you know, so I enjoy it. What drives me to come here every single day is that I want to, one, be a good provider for my family and stand by my wife and my kids. I want to show my grandkids that uh, you can be, you can make a difference every day. If you are willing to take a risk and you're willing to put yourself out there, that it's about the people that are in the arena and not the people that are judging from the sidelines. And if you're willing to get out there, then you can do anything. Never let anybody tell you you cannot do anything. There's always a different building. There's always a different challenge. There's there's always something that, an element that changes. So you never build the same building twice. You kind of build up these, all these different projects that you've been on. That it's something you could go back and show your grandkids. It's something that you can say, well, I had a part in making that. Born and raised here and Nashville was always a fairly large town. And in the last 20, 25 years or so, it has made the, cross over the threshold from town to small city. Downtown Nashville is a pretty hopping place. It's a lot of fun to go down there and hang around. There's lots to do. People are nice. You can spend all the money you want to. They'll be glad to have it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Nashville's a good place. Now them guys in New York, that's all they talked about. This is where they come for vacation. I've never even been to the Grand Ole Opry. Yes, I am proud of the fact that I've absolutely played a part in the expansion and progress of Nashville from a large town to a small city. I mean as we work day to day out here and I see all the students and staff, I know one day my daughters will be a part of a university and I know they'll be seeing the wonderful things that are going on being built for universities and I just want them to remember what we've created here. You know, and they'll think about the memories that we've made walking the job beginning, middle and end as a finished product. And it, uh, it makes me whole inside, it makes me happy, you know, because I know they know that, hey, that's what my dad does, and we're gonna go learn inside that building. So it, it's great. It's great as a whole for the university, as Clark, America, it, it's a good thing. Brick by brick and nail by nail, 
Each worker leaves his own lasting mark on the buildings he helps to construct. Their hard work will live on in Vanderbilt's new engineering and science building, an impressive tribute to the institution's growing prowess as a major producer of research, innovation, and entrepreneurship. As for the guys, there's always another building to build, always a new project to start, and as long as the construction industry keeps booming, REDCAP will be there to help them build a better Nashville, a better Tennessee, a better America. Is that good enough? Yeah. No,